you know that's how you undo things? What? So like, say you delete this, right? And then you're like, oh, f I need that. I needed that. Yeah. You just get angry. Like that's their idea. Yeah. Is that you're like so angry <laughs> that you shake your phone? Shut up. That undo. undo trash. <gasps> Yeah, I know. When I found that out, I was like, <laughs> "Whoa! Why would you not make it a button? Yeah. Like, how no, are you gonna learn that?" No, more people need to know that. Right? That's like PSA, everyone. Oh Shit, that's <laughs> right? crazy. Blessed, blessed, blessed. Hands up, cause we're all blessed. What's going on, everybody? Check it out. We are here with Morgan Lucy. Hello. And we're doing a chopping it up. So for those of you who are new to the channel, chopping it up is a series I've had for an extremely long time where we basically just have a really long conversation. And it's great because there's no edits or anything. So you really fall into a really normal conversational pace where you get to see how we really interact. And it's not like a really like structured thing. It's very natural all off the top of the head. Now, you're awesome because you have quite a few different things that you can touch on. Yeah, that's like, true. You have your whole like ovarian thing and like all that stuff, which is you and Sam are gonna Sam, talk about. Yeah, right? for okay. sure. So you can check all that stuff out on Sam's channel. Yeah. But the thing that I want to talk to you about is like your your journey with like weight loss because you're right in the middle of it. Yeah. So I feel like it's super relevant because you've you've done enough that you have like expertise and experience yeah. on things that have worked for you, but you're also working on things that will work for you to continue. Right. I'm right in it. It's yeah. like it's perfect, right? Yeah. Cool. And you just did a video with Obese Beast. Yes. Which was telling it was. It, it was a pretty good overview of like big. the whole story and kind of uh, more so like the how I gained weight and stuff like that and then what I've done so far. But so I didn't want to like repeat that video. Yeah. <laughs> so instead of instead of having her tell her story, instead I'm gonna have a couple of questions that I think are really relevant for people who are in the middle of their journey right now because I just talked to somebody on on the phone who's in the middle of their journey and they were like, "You gotta ask her this. You gotta ask yeah. her this. You gotta <laughs> ask her this." So I'm just gonna go down this list. She's gonna basically just take over and give us these these answers that she has to these questions. And I think it's gonna be really relevant for anybody out there who's currently losing weight. So I make sure so. you check Morgan out on Instagram and on YouTube. Both of the yes. links will be right under the video right there. Yes, yes. But so let's start with the first one. Basically, when you what do you do when you fall off track with your with your weight loss? However that that is for you, whatever that means with falling off track. Um, so when I fall off track, it's mainly like I find myself having to what I've learned over time is to really like be gentle with myself mentally and that's something that I always say but what I mean by that is when I'm in a funk or when I fall off track I let myself have a moment and, and really like be off track and recognize Embrace that that's it. what I am and you know and recognize also that that's like so normal and that it's not the last time I'm gonna do it. it's not the first time that I've done it and so if I'm having a day I just let myself have that day yeah and what I like to do though is like Instagram and the online community, weight loss community has been like my rock through all of it. Like it's the reason that I started losing weight. It's how I've, you know, what I've learned everything through mm -hmm. and also a big part, like a big source of inspiration and stuff and daily things because Instagram is so interactive. Like you go through daily and you see new things every single day and I've come to follow like so many people. And so when I'm really off track and mentally just like, not there and not feeling that motivation and stuff. I'm constantly online watching YouTube videos, um, reading stuff. Like I, I love like personal development, self-help books and stuff like that. It sounds cheesy, but it really does help me. Oh, like yeah, when I'm does. just plugging in and whether it's like, you know, a lot of times it's like fake it till you make it for mm -hmm. me. Like I'm yeah, just totally. like, okay, I do not feel like doing this right now, but I'm going to read this book or I'm going to watch this YouTube video, even though it's, I'd rather watch this makeup tutorial. I'm going to yeah. watch this instead because I know that I can probably gain something from it. And so, yeah, for me, it's just plugging into those sources because I know it's how everything originated for me. My original like initial inspiration came from all of these dis different sources that are just, you know, at the touch of a screen. Like I can just totally. open that up and that's where I draw inspiration from. So it's letting myself have a moment and then like plugging in to I like that you say let let yourself have a moment cuz yeah. basically what I what I see a lot of people doing and a lot of people that I talk to is they're always looking at their phones for motivation and so what they see is just people being like oh I, I got to the top of this hike yes oh I'm eating green beans only <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. And so you're like, wow, everyone else is so on track and they're all like losing weight and stuff. Yeah. And I feel like I'm, I'm an outcast right now. So yeah. do you, when you say that you like go watch videos and stuff like that, do you find them to be motivating? Do you, do you find that they're discouraging because it's people always sharing like their good moments or do you yeah. find them to be motivating because of some other factor? Yeah, no, I definitely find myself, um, that's what I like. So I really do let myself have a moment before plugging into those sources okay. because if I do that right away, it's like I compare myself. Yeah, and it's like, that's what I was why are you know like it's just you compare yourself and it's like hey well you're not on track why are you watching people that are like doing things perfectly yeah. and stuff like that so when i say that i let myself have a moment like i'm talking literally 
I could be, I could wake up in a bad mood or something or start the day off with like a really bad choice, maybe like nutritionally. Mm -hmm. And I won't do like, it's something I deal with like bipolar disorder too. And it's sometimes I just have to let myself have a day of like no plugging into phone or YouTube or anything really. And honestly, I do like numb out and it's not a good feeling, but it's kind of, like I said, being gentle with myself and allowing myself to be in that funk because life isn't life without the downs you know like Absolutely. it's you have to feel those and i learned that rather than kind of suppressing the feelings yes. and trying to just keep things going Absolutely. keep it going stay high stay high it's like no like it's it's all part of it yeah. so you gotta let yourself go down and then when i'm ready you know i have that little bit of time where i'm just like oh like i'm in a funk and I say, like, I'm just in a funk. I'll be Snapchatting and I'm like, hey guys, like, I'm just in a funk. I'm not gonna be around today, you know, and or not on Snapchat, not on Instagram. And it's kind of just become a part of how I deal with things. And then, you know, when I feel ready, when I'm like, hey, it's time to get your shit together. <laughs> like, let's start plugging in. Let's start, you know, trying to draw some inspiration. No, I like that because, uh like you're saying, if you try to deny those things all the time, because if you're if you're basing yourself off of being perfect by watching other people, then you're like, oh, I shouldn't be sad. Oh, I shouldn't be. Yeah depressed or angry yeah. or I shouldn't feel like you know I'm not making any progress like yeah if you always deny those feelings when they come up then they're gonna be there you just aren't exhausting them yeah so the only thing that you're getting the only thing the only thing that you're exhausting is your like success yes. emotion and mm -hmm. like achievement emotion and then you have like all these suppressed emotions that are there that are in the back of your mind but you never like exhaust yeah like like a lot of people will hold off crying for like years yeah. and years and then they finally cry and then you're like how did it feel and they're like oh my gosh yeah right everything's so much better yeah it's so i know i feel and i've done that before too i mean like when i was in high school and like going through some hard things i wouldn't cry for so long but like now <laughs> that i've realized that it's so important to let yourself feel things as they come and not like yes, become totally. all pent up now i'm like i cry all the time i'm yeah. like you know and i'm okay with it i'm okay with I'm not one who can, I can't hide my emotions whatsoever. If I'm happy, you're gonna know I'm happy. If yeah, I'm sad, you're gonna know I'm see. sad. I wish I could. Yeah. I really wish that I, you know, could kind of get myself together sometimes when I'm just not feeling it, but it helps me, like my own mental health and stuff. I, it's just the way that I am and it's what works for me is just being very like, wear my heart on my sleeve and stuff. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, that's kind of. I don't wanna get too tangenty on this, but it's just really interesting to me. Uh, like when you, so so while while you're angry or depressed or sad or whatever it is, it's not that it feels good. It's not like that you feel these things and you're like, I'm happy because I'm <laughs> feeling angry. No, yeah. But it's relieving and it's cathartic. Like it feels humanly fulfilling. Yeah. When you you've been angry and then you let yourself be angry, you go turn on that music and you punch something or you yeah. like go work out and you're like, yeah, fuck, I hate it, yeah. I hate it, I hate yeah. it. And it's like you needed that, like you need right. to release that. Just like how you need to go out with your friends, you need to laugh a bunch. Right. You know, whatever exactly. It is. Each emotion needs to be exhausting. In its own. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like it's as a culture and stuff. It's just like it, that's not. It, we're so not. I mean, I think what we're getting into right now is we're normalizing like actually actual humanity and being real and stuff. But it's so true that like we. I don't know. It, it's good. It's so important to feel things as you come up and let yourself feel them, you know, and like you said, like go bunch of it, like, you know, yeah. whatever you have to do. It's like, it sucks to hold that stuff in. Totally. And so, yeah, yeah. And you shouldn't like blame yourself or like devalue yourself because no. you have these things and other yeah. people don't have them. Everybody has yeah. them. Some people just hide them more than other people. Yeah. Well, and congratulate yourself for like being able to identify your feelings too. That's what I became like when I was finally able to identify, okay, so I'm feeling this way. That's why I'm doing this action. That's that's why I'm, I just binged. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, I, I feel out of control. So I do this. And so I became to kind of, like, I came to sort of not reward myself, but just, um, like be proud of myself for being able to identify those things. Yes. And I think that that's so helpful is to start looking at it like, good job. Like this is an improvement rather than shutting down, shutting out, you're seeing what's happening and you yeah. feel therefore more in control of what's going on. Cause you're understanding yourself more. Exactly. Totally. Yeah. I like that. Okay. So if you are uh, if you haven't been to the gym for a few days because you're just feeling low in motivation or whatever it is, right? Whatever yeah. time crunch, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so you're feeling guilty about going to the gym, not going to the gym, yeah. but you just don't have, like you're just not feeling like, yeah, well, get off off the couch, yeah, go yeah, to the yeah. gym. It's going to be super sweet and put on my new music. Yeah. How do you like convince yourself to do it? Or what are some kind of like things that make you 
Well, I don't like going to the gym when I'm like, um, when I feel like I'm punishing myself, you know, like I like going because I enjoy it. Yeah. And so rather than like talking myself into, okay, you could just get up off your ass and go do it. <laughs> like I'll think of something that's active that I actually enjoy doing. So like where I live, we have really awesome like hikes and stuff. So I'll go on a hike and I'll take my dog or, um, literally just like dancing, like being active, you know, I'll turn on my music and I'll just be dancing around the house. Like, you know, or if I'm watching my little cousin and stuff and I'll, I'll take him to the park and I just, I try to do stuff that's not maybe just going to the gym because if I'm not feeling it. I'm not going to feel it. I might not have a good workout. However, sometimes those are the best workouts you have, you know, True, when yeah. you like, you're just not feeling it, but you go and it's like the best workout ever. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So most of the time I'll, I'll do that or, you know, just find something active that I enjoy doing or that I feel like doing, or if I'm not feeling it, I just, I won't, you know, like yeah. I will, I'll let myself have a day. Just like I said, it all kind of goes back to the biggest thing that I've learned is be gentle with yourself. Let yourself have a day. Yeah. I like you know? that. But, yeah, so like if you've been letting yourself have a day for a few days and now you're like, right. and now I want to get, I want to get back on it. A good way to do that would just be like, I'm going to take my dog for a walk. I haven't done that in a while. Yeah. Instead of like, oh, I'm going to go bench press and squat and like, right. it's right, like a right, lot right, to right. look at. Whereas you're right, like if you're like, I'm going to take my son to the park. Yeah. It's 20 minutes. Yeah. But then you're out there, you're breathing. I don't have a son though. <laughs> she don't have a son. I don't, I am Let's not Let's not another. misconstrue this. <laughs> They're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> we, were just, we were talking about uh, <laughs> Forever Alone Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh, let's just get that one clear. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> coming back to it. No, I think that's a really good way to start because you get out yeah. there, you start eating the endorphins, and then you're like, yeah. you know what? I'll finish with a little jog. Yeah, or exactly. Like that. Yeah. Like right. the other day, actually, I, I was going outside just because it was really nice and I wanted to go for a walk real quick, and I ended up jogging, and then I ended up being out there for like an hour and a half. Like, yeah. That's why I want to get your answer. Like, what do you do when you're not, when you, maybe a couple days, you just haven't been feeling it? Are you, like, always feeling it, though? You're, like, yeah. <laughs> every day. Oh it's hard God. to answer that question because I don't want to answer it like that because it yeah. sounds, like, super douchey. Like, yeah, it's no big deal for me. But, like. Yeah, no, it makes sense. It's, it's become your. ingrained in me. Like, yeah. I've been exercising since I was about six. So, I've been doing Damn. hardcore soccer six days a week, too. So, it's, the amount of stuff that I do is the same. I still do six days a week lifting. Right. Whereas, I used to do six days a week soccer. So, it's not, like, a task anymore to you. Like, it's more like a. It like releases stuff yeah. out of me. Like if I don't work out for two or three days, I'll be super antsy, irrit irritable, and like angry. Oh, okay. and like an, It's just weird. And then yeah. I go hit that workout and I'm like, oh yeah, that's why Feels I was so doing all better. weird, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Like this is so awesome. Yeah, cool. Um, I, I don't know. For me, for me, I think like um, if I'm feeling like super angry or mad or something like that, where it's not like, oh, it's going to go to the gym today. In that, in that kind of thing, I just put on like the, the most angry, <laughs> terrible music ever. Yeah. And then I just get into it. Like I feel... Like I'm the dude rapping, whatever, and right. then I take it out at the gym, and it's like the best. Yeah, man. well, that's cool. It's like the whole letting yourself like get in that emotion, absolutely. Like, really feel. Oh gosh, yeah. damn, I love it, man. I, <laughs> I'm such a like a theater type of person. Yeah. Like I don't know why I didn't do theater when I was in high school. Really? Oh, dude, I should have, man. I would loved it. You got that drama in you? Well, I love every emotion, man. I love yes. to be angry, or I love to be sad, or I love to be happy. Like oh, I love that. I love every emotion. That's so cool. Yeah. Because they're all valuable in their own way. Right. Like I've always said, uh, because as a cinematographer making content, I think that sad emotions are the emotions that evoke the most for people. They're the ones that will resonate the deepest with you. So when you watch the Johnny Straws documentary for yeah. the most like, relevant thing I can re relate watch to. Watch that, you guys. It's amazing. Go watch Seriously. it. Seriously. You'll, you'll, you'll remember that because you're like getting yeah. sad. You cry a bunch. But like, you know, you watch the video about the pro surfer who's now right. going to Oahu and he's surfing there and that's right. really cool, but you forget it. Yeah. Because it was like, yeah, I'm, I'm more successful. But yeah. when you watch that guy like struggle and you were sad and you cried, like, yeah. Well, because it, it makes you feel and like we, we, at least like watching people, especially online and stuff, we see them being happy more so. And it's like when something really gets you to feel those lows, you resonate with it so more it sticks with you. Yep. You know? Those are my favorite movies. Like when people always say, what's your favorite movie? And people be like, oh, Step Brothers or something that's yeah. really funny. For me, it's like Saving Private Ryan. The that Notebook. Was... Oh, Saving Private Ryan. Have you dude. seen it? Yes. Yeah, oh my God, dude. I love it. Favorite movie ever, dude. Love it. Yeah, And yeah, since yeah. I was like 12, when I first watched it, I was like, I, like I recognized that like that's yeah. a deep thing, like that yeah. sad stuff. So. I don't know. I'm going on love a tangent it. again. I do a lot of tangenting. That's what chopping it up. <laughs> That's what this is for. Though. Okay, I love so it. So this is a this is a really good one that you're gonna be able to give a, a tip on that I think a lot of people are gonna really like okay. is because a lot of people struggle with salty or sweet. Mm -hmm. When you're feeling like you want something really sweet, when you're like craving candy or ice cream or whatever like nice big sweet thing but you know that's yeah. gonna be like 40 billion calories yeah what do you do to take care of your sweet craving without actually indulging and screwing up your diet okay so this is actually it makes me think to something that i did like last week i recently cut out all added sugars to my diet um 
I have fallen a bit off track, but I'm going to get right back on. Yeah. <laughs> but um, when I, I did that for, I think it was like just a little bit over a week. So I was definitely dealing with those cravings. And I knew I wouldn't be going through that detox. Like it's crazy how much added sugar that oh, yeah. we like consume. It's literally insane. And so cutting all of that out. Um, I was, oh my God, I remember I went into, this is how messed up the food industry is. I was shopping for clothes, okay? And so I'm at Forever 21 and I get to the, to check out and it's just full of candy, okay? And I'm like, they do this, why do they do this and You to never us? realized there was so much candy in Forever 21 oh, until never, then. Oh, never, never, never. Yeah, and I'm like, especially, okay, so like sour candy is That's my jam. weakness. Like, like sour patch kids. Of, oh, <laughs> Or what about the rips? What? Oh, the rips, no. Those are way they, better. Okay, but they just came out, you know like the sour straws? <laughs> they have blue raspberry flavor only. Okay, and I had never had that. I see that at the <laughs> checkout line and I was just like, no. <laughs> No, but so I M was with me and I was, we were like shopping that night and I just got in the worst mood. Okay, I'm like, I need something sweet. I'm about to, like, no, I'm going back to that store. I'm going to go buy those and I'm going to eat them, okay? And then I was like, Morgan, you can't do that. You've done so good. Like, it's been eight days, no sugar, like, doing so good. And so I was in Target and I was like, okay, what can I get here that's going to, like, keep me on track? And I just thought of berries. I'm like, well, blue raspberry is the flavor I'm craving. I'm craving, craving. <laughs> and um, so I was like, go get some berries. So I ended up eating a shit ton of berries, but it totally satisfied my craving like for sweet things I love blueberries raspberries anything like that and if that's not sweet enough for you put some stevia on it oh, all yeah. natural sweetener sprinkle that on some people do sugar whatever sugar if you want to do that stevia though that like totally satisfies my sweet cravings totally. completely 100% when I was a kid my mom would slice the strawberries into little slices and then put sugar on it and it would make yeah. like this big glazed oh. little pot of strawberry slices right you could do that yeah. with stevia I know you and totally you essentially could. just be taking in like five strawberries right yeah, Pretty there you solid. go. And berries. you be tasting like you're eating a Jubilee pie or something yeah. like that. Yeah, but definitely berries as opposed to like, because I, I used to do like mangoes or something like that, but those are so high in sugar. So like berries I've definitely are the lowest That's sugar a good fruits point. and stuff. So. Yeah, because like you could you could eat a watermelon really quickly. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Like me and Obesity used to do that when we were on contest. Really? But be like, oh shit, dude. <laughs> 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 Ate your whole fucking watermelon. Dude. Yeah. You no, well a lot of people think, oh, it's a fruit, it's healthy. But like, you know, you eat a banana and that shit's like 60 carbs. Mm. And like for one banana and it's like, okay, well it's healthy, whatever. Or, you know, but if you're in weight loss mode, I think berries are definitely the best low sugar and stuff So I like it for for me uh, when I was dieting like really hard Well, whenever I diet really hard like contest prep the things that come in are like the really low 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 calorie things that can help me So for me like making tea every time I'm really craving something yeah. helps a lot until right. it's time for like a proper meal Okay, you know I mean? so like okay. if I'm in between lunch and dinner and I'm wanting to snack. I'm like you shouldn't snack There's no need for it. Yeah, you just you have that stimulus. Yeah, and like a tea. low calorie drink tea yeah, yeah, tea with a little stevia. I loved green tea like diet green tea with honey I think it's just like Lipton makes it literally but it was that's one thing that I would always Lipton? drink to Yeah, like Lipton sugar-free. How many people from the UK right now are super pissed about that? Uh Oh, uh oh, I didn't even think about when that. When I came back from the UK the first time <laughs> I was like wow I didn't realize how much people are like tea Nazis man. They uh -oh. really Oh God. They're like, oh, <laughs> you only drink Lipton. Have you ever tried PG tips? And I'm like, oh, what? I'm sorry that I suck at tea. Oh my <laughs> God, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, damn, I haven't been to the UK yet. Don't judge me. Dude, I came back oh though, and now I'm like the biggest tea. I love tea Your so tea's much. not really? I have like 40 e kettles in my house, so I can make tea What's like your favorite on the dime. Time? Uh, PG tips is really good for like a standard no flavor type, just like right. normal tea like flavor. Like black tea, like, mm -hmm. okay, love it. I don't know. I like um, I like the the peach flavors of stuff. Yes, it's such good like, peach with a little Love sweetener. It. Ooh. Yes, Ooh. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, tea's a for me. It's a really big one. Coffee is good for other people because they see the caffeine drops yeah. their hunger out. It does but for me. I do coffee. I feel like sometimes when you use coffee though as your like thing, you're gonna end up drinking like nine cups. Yeah, exactly. Not sleeping. Then the next day, yeah, do it with moderation. Food. I like doing coffee with um a little bit of like Premier Protein as a creamer, and so you get a little oh, yeah. bit of protein, a yeah, little bit of calories, true. but the coffee definitely suppresses appetite for me when you're um when you're like going day to day because you're still so like how much have you lost so far by the way so i've lost 110 damn yeah i didn't know it was that much i thought it was yeah. much less no crazy. <laughs> it was uh, i was i was huge <laughs> yeah That's very much awesome how but, much um, farther do you think you have to go so I, when I first started losing weight, I was like almost 300, well, I was 286 pounds. And um, I set my goal weight as 146 pounds because that would be exactly 140 pounds lost. And as you lose weight, you just kind of realize that it's so not the number that it's matters. Really I'm like, I don't give a damn about what number yeah. I get to on the scale. Um, 
right now I'm at like 170, that's, see, I, all the time I'm like, I'm at like 275 pounds because I'm still not in my head, but like, yeah. but, um, yeah, so I'm at like 175. Um, so I don't know. I feel like I'll be comfortable probably around like 20, 30 pounds from now. I don't really know. I'm kind of going off of how I feel, but I really just want to be strong and not feel like I'm carrying excess weight because I do still yeah. right now. Um, but I just want to be be strong and that's a good point dude it's so not about the number so many people trivialize that it's yeah. really not or like i get you know con or messages all the time i really want to lose 10 pounds and i'm like but what do you want to actually lose do you want to lose pounds no you want to lose yeah. the discomfort that you're feeling that you're living with you want to you know you want to gain a feeling not exactly. lose pounds like so yeah, yeah yeah what are you aiming to feel yeah and then, exactly. then really address what's going to happen yeah yeah yeah. yeah, instead of losing 10 pounds and you're still super unhappy with your diet exactly. and Exactly, yeah, yeah. And you don't want to make yourself miserable in doing it. Like, it's so many people diet just to get to a number. Yeah. And it's like you make yourself miserable, and then when you start to incorporate, like, normal day-to-day -day stuff or you start to go back to kind of a normal diet or something like that, so you're going to start gaining weight. So mm -hmm. why did you go through making yourself miserable if you're just going to, when you go back to real life, it's going to gain it all back again. You yeah. Know? So it's finding that moderation, I think. Yeah, instead of just going high and low, high and low, roller yeah. coastering all the time. Which I still struggle with, for sure. Sure. So <laughs> you're still losing weight, so you're still right in the middle of it. Yes. What's what's something that you struggle with every single day? Well, maybe not every single day, but like a pretty daily struggle that you still have to be conscious about and think about when it comes to your weight loss. Yeah. So it's kind of something that I practice, but have a hard or that I preach and have a hard time practicing is not letting one um, mess up, one slip up, one mistake dictate my next decision or my next choice. Um, I definitely find myself like when I fall off track, maybe for even just a meal, it's like, okay, well this day doesn't count. I'm going to let myself have this day. And then it turns into two days and three days and a week and two weeks. And, um, so I have a hard time getting away from the whole like all or nothing mentality. I'm our, I'm either like on my game completely hundred percent. I'm hitting the gym every day. I'm like counting my macros and hitting every perfectly. Right. Or I am, it's like, I make a decision and it's just, I kind of clock out. And I decide to, I, I ignore, like I know what I should be doing, but I just try to avoid it. And I'm like, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with it. Like just, you yeah. know, it's like avoidance mode go, turns on like that. And like, so I'm trying, I'm still working on that, you know? And I, that's what I tell people all the time is like, okay, don't let yourself, if you mess up one time, don't let yourself use that as an excuse to have that full day off or something. But like definitely something I'm still working on. What do you do to... Like, what do you, what's a technique that you use to help you with that? Um, well, I think that every once in a while, I don't like tracking macros like every day or for a long amounts of time because I can get really obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. But if I am finding myself having, like if I've been off track for a few days, what I'll do is without really consciously making an effort to severely like change things automatically one day because that's really that's hard for me what i'll do is i will track everything i eat very honestly even though i know it's not good and at the end of the day when i can look at what i've eaten it kind of freaks me out and i'm like whoa like you've actually eaten this much sugar you've eaten so many carbs so many calories yeah you're gonna gain weight you don't want to go back to what you've been doing this is exactly how you got there so visually like seeing that like and knowing like mathematically that okay well this leads to weight gain totally and not just avoiding what you're intaking i think that actually being able to like write it all out you know my fitness pal is like my best friend yeah and is. so just looking at it and right in the eye you know yeah. and because i'll have i'll let myself have a, a few days of like just avoidance like it's you know i just don't want to deal with it but then when it's finally time to really turn it back on totally it's seeing exactly what you're intaking Absolutely. and then oftentimes that's exactly what i need motivation wise to get me back on track yeah create a tangible yeah like uh reality check yeah instead exactly. of just being like yeah I'll, I'll, i'm gonna get back to it pretty soon I, yeah yeah well and that's what i'll do like i'll track one day very honestly even though i know i'm off track and then for the next few days i'll track and it becomes like like for me tracking macros and calories and everything is kind of like a game like i do mm -hmm. it you know like I, I know i'm off track for that one day but then the maybe three days following that i'll do it and i'll all throughout the day i'm on i'm on my phone tracking yeah. and stuff and it is like a game, it is like, like a game. i have to do this what can i, I fit to get into this little tetris block yeah exactly 22 grams protein left <laughs> yeah totally. 
totally. Yeah, so it's just kind of then throughout the day, like, you know, I let myself have a few days and I get back into it and mm-hmm. I get back to kind of like enjoying the process of weight loss and counting these things because it is interesting, nutrition and weight loss and things like that. It's cool how it is so mathematic and it's interesting. That's me, true. So. It actually is really fun to diet in a way. It sounds so stupid. Yeah. But like when I'm coming to a cut, like especially yeah. for me because it's different, but like I'll be bulking for so long that I'm like, man, I, I can't wait. It's been yeah. so long since I've counted food. Yeah. <laughs> or since I've like eaten those things I don't usually eat, like salads yeah. and like these little diet foods and stuff. And I get excited. <laughs> little diet like, foods. <laughs> and it's like, and I, sometimes I forget because then when you're in the cut for so long, you're like, okay, I'm five months into it. You're like, yeah. I hate this. I can't wait to be over. Mm-hmm. But then I always have to be like, but remember when you were about to start and you were all excited? Yeah. Remember the, yeah, like yeah, what yeah, parts yeah. of this are actually pretty fun, even though the whole thing's a struggle. Right. The struggles are fun. It's not like I don't want right. life to be easy, period. That's yeah. that's boring. Yeah. You know, no, I it, want is, a it is. Yeah. And that Constantly could be, having a challenge. Dude, yeah. the tracking macros thing can be a, a, a huge challenge each day, and it's really fun, especially when you get towards the end, right? Because yes. that's when the challenge comes. You're like, yes. now I have these 400 calories, and they're consisting of these weird. You really got to think about it. Yeah, and you're it's like. It's like a puzzle. Like, what? piece is totally. gonna fit this puzzle. And you puzzle. start comparing and you're yeah. like, I could have three pieces of toast and a banana, <laughs> yes. or I could have two cups of oatmeal, or like 700 <laughs> blocks of jello. 700 blocks. <laughs> oh my god, it's so true though. Right? But it becomes fun like that, and if you look at it that way, it's like that, it's a more positive connotation, exactly. not just dieting, like, oh I need to cut all of this out, or I can only have this many calories, and only have, like start, thinking of it as, okay, I get to have all of this, how can I make it most enjoyable? I get to have. Yeah, I get to have it. Even, like yep. I said, fake it till you make it, it's like, tell yourself, just changing the um, the words actually yes. that you're thinking, yep. oh, I can only have this, I get yep. to have this, just like you just said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, super yeah. important to look at things. Reinforce way. your mental idea of like, this is gonna be good by saying good things. Even though at first it feels like just a bunch of BS, yeah. like you're like, God, whatever. And just but lying. Say it out loud, like make yourself say it out loud. I get to have this, I get to have that. Literally writing it down, things like that, just to change your like thought process is super important. I've done that, I mean, I'm. It sounds crazy, but yeah, I've totally like written down stuff. I get to do this today. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. like am grateful. I love doing like gratitude, like gratitude journals. Yes. I was about to say that. That's like my favorite thing to it's do really because good. it really keeps you in check. You yeah. know, there's always something, even when it doesn't feel like it. There's always definitely something to be grateful for. Totally. This pooch is that was I know. Well, there's two ducks here, and there's also two ladies right there. <laughs> uh, back when I was in high school, when I first went in high school, I was homeschooled all the way up to seventh grade, skipped oh, really? eighth grade, and went into ninth grade. So I didn't oh. know. I had one person I knew. It wasn't really even a friend. Oh, my so fake it till you make it is like key to Because <laughs> yeah. like I faked that I was comfortable around all these people yes. I didn't know. While they all have like their middle school and elementary school friends yeah. I've known for like their whole life. And I'm like, right. yeah, no, it's cool. Like, I love yeah. being at the party that I know no one at. Yeah. It's super fun. <laughs> but then eventually did it work for you? Of you did become, yeah. yeah. And now, become. I'm, now I'm this dude who's all bubbly and yeah. like I, I literally do not get nervous yeah. about like social interaction. I don't care. Like I'm just like, right. what's up? You, oh, you don't like me. It's okay. Whatever. Yeah. I'm used to that. Don't well, worry. Yeah. Where, whereas if I would have just always been like, <sighs> be nervous. Be worried about yeah. it. Yeah. Everything's bad. Everyone hates you. Mm. Right. I would have at this point been like, man, everybody hates me. Well, that's not challenging yourself. You know, that's just exactly. like allowing yourself to be in your fears and to not try to change them. And that's what's so cool about life though is to like actually, I feel like the most ha- happy people in life are the ones who are okay with not hitting a destination and always like being working towards something. Yeah. That's where I found like my happiness is never being, it sounds crazy, but never being content mm-hmm. and like always Complacent. wanting to, yeah, just always finding something because I can like whatever I'll get to a certain amount like a certain weight or something but then I'm like okay but I want to do this I want to get you know change my like muscle mass stuff like that there's always different goals or I want to be able to do this thing physically that I've never been able to do and so it's like always having goals it's yeah it's a good thing it's like a personality trait I think yeah. you can kind of like work it up so you can practice it. But yeah, yeah, always creating a new challenge or something interesting that's that you can focus on. I haven't always been like that either. Really? Like I've always been like, hey, like, I mean, at least growing up, like I just, I was always looking or searching for or trying to work toward a destination that I would get there. And that's what definitely like, that's, I think why I dealt with depression a lot is because I would get you- there and I would realize that well, I have this thing now or I'm at this place now, but why am I not happy? Yeah. You know, and it was because I'm not, I'm not fully exerting myself. I'm not pushing myself. And that's where I found happiness is growing and, you know, and allowing myself to, to work hard. And because I feel like working hard is like the most gratifying thing yeah, that is. you could possibly do. Absolutely. And then seeing the, you know, and then reaping the benefits of it mm. for sure. So like trying to get to one destination is just like, I don't know. Now it's a, it's kind of like the number on the scale. I'm like, I don't really know what number yeah. I want to hit. You know, That's I good. just want to, it's a feeling. 
and then I'm sure I'll have another feeling that I want to, you know, another goal that I want to accomplish and stuff. Like, it's just kind of, it's ongoing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally, I absolutely vibe with that. That's like yeah. me, me in a nutshell, dude. Yeah. I always wanted to work on something. Right. It's almost like to my demise because I should work on one thing until it like makes a billion dollars for me. Yeah. But I would rather create a podcast, make a mixtape, make a documentary, make yeah. this for this guy, make that for that guy, shoot for this guy. It's, right. It's so much more fun because while those things don't, sur- like they don't come to be money. Right. Money's not what makes me happy though. That would be the destination yeah. of having much money. Yeah. But my, my fun is like, Oh, I want to make a documentary. I'm just going to do it. Passion project. Figure it out. Yeah, yeah dude. That's it's... what I said at the beginning of 2017. I'm like, this is my year of passion projects. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want to waste my time with the BS that's going to, you know, if I'm going to make less money than I made last year, all right, cool, whatever. If I don't lose as much weight, if I can just be like doing things I'm really passionate about, then that's like, that's success. I think just like you're saying, like yeah. that's when you're most happy. Like you don't care about the money and stuff, you know? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have one last question. I think this is going to be a good one to end it on. Also, I think this is going to help a lot of people because okay. when you're getting into your weight loss journey or you're in the middle of it, a lot of people don't don't tend to know all these little things that because we're always on social media, we know. We've yeah. been blasted with a million times. But uh, when you jump on the scale, you probably don't weigh yourself every day, but I'm sure there's a point where you were probably over obsessing about the scale yeah. and stuff. And I'm sure you've run into that point where you weighed yourself yesterday, you were 200, and then you weighed yourself the next day, and you're 211 pounds or whatever. Yeah. And, and obviously, we know you can't gain 11 pounds of fat <laughs> in 16 hours yeah. of sleep or whatever. Like, you just can't. It's not possible. Right. But it's disc- like it's just, it gets in your head. Yeah, for sure. So for you, how much have you seen that scale move before? And then what was your mentality with, like, approaching it and everything okay. like that? Okay, so I can fluctuate literally 10 pounds in a day. That's crazy. Like 10 pounds. And that's a little bit more extreme than other people that I've heard. But at the same time, like I've also met people that it's the same story. Mm-hmm. And um, obviously that's like a mental, <laughs> you see that and it's like, what the hell? Like I'm working so hard and it's not for this. Like yep. what? But especially like, I don't know. Honestly, I would get mad at the scale. Okay, so before kind of just previously and what definitely led to my weight gain and my failure of trying to lose weight in the past was obsessing over the scale, Mm -hmm. weighing myself daily. And if I didn't lose a pound a day, like I was upset. Failing. Yeah, I was failing. And so might as well not try at all. You know, (laughs) well, I'm not going to do this. I'm not seeing the results anyway. So I'm, why put myself through this misery? (laughs) That type of thing. And so um, just kind of learning this whole science, like behind the fact that we carry water weight and we, you know, that's not how our bodies work is just, it's impossible to gain 10 pounds of fat. Like, yeah. And then, you know, as far as like muscle weight and more than fat and there's all this stuff that goes into it. And so I wouldn't weigh myself for like a week. I would have one weigh in day of the week. Mm -hmm. Um, when I was becoming like obsessive over it. Now I'm at the point where honestly, the numbers are just really not important to me. Um, And I know that's not the case for everyone, but 100 pounds, 110 pounds, you know, later I'm at the place where I do feel a lot better. And that's what really is important to me. And so I actually do weigh myself every day now. Um, It's just kind of like part of my routine, but I guess like a tip I would give is ladies especially, just realize that like it's, part of our body like that's just how it works you're gonna carry water weight you're not gonna lose a pound a day if you really don't need to like that's not realistic expectations and so again i I always go back to being gentle with yourself and realizing that this is just real life and like humanity and it's fine um yeah but so weighing myself every day has been I, i keep myself accountable but i also wouldn't recommend doing that if you're not like if you are really I don't know. Not well, at this point, that. you've reset your perspective, and it's not exactly. about the number. So you put less weight into that number. Yeah. So it doesn't matter to you. Like if it's up three pounds, you're not gonna be like, I am losing. I'm failing yeah. at what I'm trying to do. You understand yeah. how it works. So it doesn't. Yeah. yeah, it's just part of your routine now. Yeah, but I think the best way to weigh yourself is in the morning, naked after you've peed. <laughs> That's like the best time, you know. That's what, I don't weigh myself if I miss that opportunity. <laughs> like, That's yeah, true. Yeah. You know? Every single day, you should weigh yourself at the same, yeah. same point. Right. And like honestly, if I if I forget to do it in the morning, I know I'm not gonna weigh myself because I'm like that's automatically I know I'm gonna be discouraged because it's probably gonna be more than it was the day before. So I'm like, all right, well I'll do it in the morning or I won't do it at all. Totally. It's more accurate. So. I like it. Yeah. Um, the the only last thing I want to mention is that. 
when you are gaining and losing these pounds, it's going to be a combination of water and glycogen. So if yes. you worked out extremely hard and you weigh yourself, you're going to be so much lighter than after you've drinking that water, eaten that food back, your muscles fill back up with glycogen as well as your liver fills back up with glycogen plus all that water. So it can be anywhere from like four pounds. Obese to beast has gained up to 16 pounds in one, really? one day. Oh my God. So just to yeah. like give an idea, yeah. like, like it's, you're not, irregular it's not weird. right you're it's fine normal. you know yeah. and just don't so over obsess with it and then please also don't weigh yourself the next day assuming that that's going to be the judgment of whether or not this is water weight because water weight will stick around for three four five days sometimes it'll stick around for a week two weeks if you're on your period it'll stick around for a month <laughs> yeah you know what i mean science bitch that's what that is <laughs> like really don't beat yourself up about it and, yeah. and i think um even if you happened to not be losing weight for two yeah. weeks but you're still doing all the right things you're still working out you're still in that lifestyle and your lifestyle has changed and you're sticking to that lifestyle you're succeeding because yeah. you're not doing what you used to do and right. you're not gaining weight Right, exactly. No, and that's when I find like the most successful moments is when you push through those times where you're not seeing the results. Yep. You gotta remind yourself, it's okay. This, you know, it's gonna pay off. It's gonna pay off. Again, fake it till you make it. Even yep. if you don't believe it, even if you think you're telling yourself a bunch of BS, c consistency is so key with weight loss. And then you'll find yourself two weeks later and you've lost five pounds. And it could happen even overnight, but like you know that this is like, okay. Thank God. It eventually pays off. It's what I've been working for. And staying consistent is like so, so important. Totally. Yeah. Like sometimes you'll cash in and you'll be like, well, that's more than I expected. Yeah. And sometimes exactly. you'll be in debt a little bit. Exactly. And you just got to work right, right through it. Yeah. So that is that is it for this Chopping Up. I thought this was really, really cool. Uh, definitely get a different perspective. Exactly like what she thinks, how she approaches everything. How do they follow you? How do they get everything on you? All right. So I'm most active on Instagram, which is at Morgan Losing. Um, my YouTube channel is also Morgan Losing. Snapchat, Morgan Losing. <laughs> Everything's basically wow. Morgan Losing. Twitter's Morgan Losing, but I just am not on there really. So yeah. Or you can email me at MorganLosing at Gmail. <laughs> Go check her out. You guys got to follow her. She's super, super cool. Uh, she's becoming a very good friend of pretty much everyone here in San Diego. Obese yeah. to be Sammy, me. So, Thanks for having me on the channel. Yeah, definitely. It's cool. Dude. You guys are awesome. I love yeah. you guys. I just, I like meeting people who have a genuine um, intention. You know what I yeah. Mean? Because I meet a lot of people and they have like good things that they're doing, but they don't have great intentions. And I feel yeah. like you have pretty damn good intentions. Good. So it's awesome. We're vibing. Yeah, check her out if, you, uh, if you're interested in fat loss or anything like that. Or if you're worried about like anything ovarian or hormonal. I don't really know exactly what's going on. <laughs> Ladies, She's come got on you. over. Come on over. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Let's get this to a thousand likes or more. Ooh, yeah. Leave a comment. Let us know what you thought below. And subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Team Beyond the Week. CT. Lift heavy or die, Myron, motherfucker. Mm. Team Beyond the Week. CT. Lift heavy.